Hi everyone, this is going to be a walkthrough of some of the digestive models for our Bio 139 lab. Um, and what we see here in this first image is a portion of the full digestive system model, just to zoom in and show some of the pieces that are a little bit smaller on this model, make them a little bit easier to see. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And what we're looking at in this image is the head and neck uh, in mid-sagittal view so that we can see actually what's going on inside the mouth and the throat area. The pieces that you will need to know for this model, first, these white structures here in front, those are the teeth. This large muscular organ right here is the tongue. Up above the tongue, where we can see there's some bone here, this area right here is the, the hard palate. And just behind that, we can see where the bone ends, this area right here would be the soft palate. And an extension of that soft palate hanging down right here, this is the uvula or the uvula. That's that little punching bag looking thing that hangs down in the back of your throat. Now right here where they've got the number five, this is labeled on the key to this model as the pharynx. But in reality, this is only a part. This is the oropharynx. But the pharynx actually extends here from the back of the nose all the way down to this point right here where the esophagus and the larynx and trachea separate from each other. So really, everything in this area all the way up to here would be considered the pharynx. And like I just said, this tube right here is the esophagus, but we will see that a little bit better in the next view when we can see the whole model. So now we've zoomed out a little bit and we can see the entire digestive system model in this view. I won't go back over the parts that we've already covered in the face, the head area, but we will go and pick up now with the esophagus, which we just saw, that now extends. It's this tube that delivers a bolus of food down to the stomach, which is this large structure right here. So here we have the stomach. Now, the stomach we're going to look at again as its own model here in just a little bit to see some of the more uh, detailed aspects of the stomach itself. Um, so just hold off on that and we'll come back to the stomach in a little while. As we leave the stomach, we're now going to enter the small intestines. And the small intestines, there are a few different regions. This first bit that just leaves the stomach is called the duodenum. The duodenum is the first part of the small intestines. It's also the shortest part of the small intestines, typically about 10 inches or so. And then that takes us down to the rest of the small intestines, which is this lighter tan or pink colored structure right here. So the small intestines, it has three parts to it. We just saw the duodenum. Next, we get to this darker colored area right here. This is the jejunum. And then the lighter colored area, this is the end uh, portion of the small intestines. This is the ileum. Now the ileum, when it ends, it joins with the first part of the large intestines. And the large intestines will also have several structures. This point right here, where the small intestines, the ileum, joins with the first part of the large intestines, which is called the cecum, that's this pouch right here. This point where they meet is called the ileocecal junction. And there is a ring of muscle right here called the ileocecal sphincter. Now, hanging from the end of the cecum is this kind of finger-like protrusion. 
This is called the vermiform appendix. Usually we just kind of shorten that to the appendix, but it's vermiform appendix. Back to the main body of the large intestines. First, this part on this side is called the ascending colon. Going across the top is the transverse colon. And going down the side is the descending colon. This very last portion of the large intestine is the rectum. And then the ring of muscle right here is the anus, which is the exit from the digestive system. Additionally, there are a couple of other structures that we can see in this model um, here, this light colored area with the white extending through it. This is the pancreas, which we will see on its own here in just a few minutes. This large structure right here is the liver and the green within it is the gallbladder. And again, we will see both of those on their own here in just a moment. Now, not really part of the digestive system, but something else we can see in this model right here, this is the spleen and it kind of hides below and behind the stomach and the pancreas. So here we see the liver. Uh, on the left here, we see the liver from the front, from an anterior view. And then here we've kind of rotated the liver just a little bit so that we can see underneath and a little bit behind the liver. And the parts of the liver that you need to know uh, when viewed from the front, we can see that the liver is kind of divided into different regions. This larger portion right here, this is what would be on the right side of your body. So this is the right lobe of the liver. And then here, a little bit smaller, this is the left lobe of the liver. That's what extends towards your stomach. Now, if we look underneath and slightly behind the liver, again, we can see the gallbladder, which is uh, looks like number 20 on this model. This is the gallbladder. This is where bile is stored. The liver makes the bile and the gallbladder stores the bile. And as bile exits, this structure right here extending down from the gallbladder is called the cystic duct. Cystic duct. We see two smaller ducts right here. This one is the right hepatic duct. This one is the left hepatic duct. Because remember, this is the right side of the liver, this is the left side. So this is the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct. And then when everything joins together, this down here is the common hepatic duct. Now we see the isolated stomach models. Uh, here on the left is the stomach uh, still intact. And my thumb right here is joining right where the duodenum leaves the stomach. Here in this middle picture, I've kind of separated right here where I'm holding. So you can see the duodenum. And then we can see here the pancreas, which kind of sits behind the stomach. We can't really see much of it. Just right here at the edge, we can see a little bit. But here in this middle image, I've separated it so that we can plainly see the pancreas. And then over here on the right, all I've done is just open it up so that we can see the interior of the stomach. So let's look to see all the parts of the stomach that you need to know. And most of these that I'm going to point out, you also need to know on that full digestive system model. They're just easier to see in this isolated stomach model. So here, connecting to the top portion of the stomach in this image, this is the end of the esophagus. So this is the esophagus right here. And when we open the stomach up so that you can see where the stomach and the esophagus actually meet, there is a ring of muscle here. And this is called the cardiac sphincter. 
This actually has a few names. Sometimes you will hear it called the gastroesophageal sphincter or the gastroesophageal junction, but ideally we want to call this the cardiac sphincter. A sphincter is just a ring of muscle. We've seen a few of them now by this point in the digestive system. And this is called the cardiac sphincter because this area is right next to your heart. And if you've ever had heartburn, typically that's because the cardiac sphincter is not doing its job of keeping contents in the stomach. And some of that uh, chyme, the digested food, and some of the stomach acid actually moves upward into the esophagus and causes a burning sensation, heartburn. Well, this part of the stomach right here is called the cardiac region or the cardia. This part that kind of balloons outward from the rest of the stomach, this is called the fundus or the fundic region. This portion is called the body of the stomach or the body region. And then down here, this funnel shaped area is called the pylorus or the pyloric region. Now, as we get to the end of the pylorus, uh, again, this is where it meets with this duodenum, the first part of the small intestines. And we have a ring of muscle here. The ring here, its job is to contain the chyme as it's being digested until it's ready to move into the small intestines. This ring of muscle is called the pyloric sphincter or the pyloric valve. So even though we've seen now the interior of the stomach and what the regions are named, we could still use those names on the, the full stomach from the outside. Again, this region right here is the cardiac region, the fundic region, the body region, and the pyloric region. Now, in addition, we can also see down here the pancreas. So this whole gland right here is the pancreas, and the white structures those are the pancreatic ducts. So that's it for the walkthrough of the digestive system. Uh, don't forget there are some other videos to watch for lab exam two.